I was 37 years old, I thought that I should start to get in shape. And one way to do it would be to start running. It was about uh, three months after starting, I heard about a marathon and trained to do it and did one October 11, 1981. And then I had the goal of doing one or more races per month. And so as it's turned out, I've done one race or more per month now for 35 years. Never missing a month. Sometimes doing a, a short run at the beginning of the month to be sure that if I didn't finish the long run for any reason, that I'd have the month covered. I have done 26 100s, and I've done 175 ultra marathons. So there's been many of them that I really liked. Western States 100 mile endurance run is a mountain run. It was started as a horse race. And there was a runner, Gordy Ainsley. His horse came up lame. He decided that he was going to run the route rather than ride a horse. And that's what he did. Then it became uh, kind of popular. So that's the way it started. I didn't like it in the beginning. And I could see it was so important to him. That's how it got started. Now it's just a way of life for us. Once he sets a goal for himself, it's impossible to go right or left. I think that's probably what gets these ultra runners. It's one of the, the biggest races, and not necessarily because it has the most people or it's maybe the most difficult course, but it's the most iconic. So you come to the Western States, and there's just this energy about The odds of getting into Western States through the lottery are difficult, to put it mildly. I applied for Western States every year since 2010, but in 2016, I did make it. Western States is probably the most prestigious race in the US. And being 100 miles through mountains and canyons, it's obviously really tough. My name is Wally Hesseltine, and I am 72 years old. All I have to do is finish it under 30 hours. And if I do that, then I'm the oldest finisher ever in the history of the race. I think I've in four different parts. You start off with the mountains, go straight up into the High Sierra. The first 30 miles is probably the most beautiful part of the course. It kind of just rolls up, and you have the sunrise, and it's, it's kind of just easing you into the day. Then you get to the canyons. This is probably the most famous part of the race, where it gets really, really hot. Temperature's probably gonna get up to over 100 degrees. Your legs are starting to get tired, there's a lot of downhill, and the heat of the day is really ramping up. Three miles down, and then you get to the bottom, and then it's three miles up. And you do that several times over the next four to five hours. Hey, 
Suze. Hey, Wally. You put that sunscreen, huh? Yeah, I did. Trying to get your look up here. Oh, that feels good, I'm yeah. telling you. and you get to see your crew. It's, it's energizing. Between miles 62 and 78, you get onto running down to the river. If you haven't prepared your quads for the downhills, you're just going to blow them out there. That's the bit that'll make or break it for Wally to go for his record, is how much running he can do there, and importantly, how much he has to stop or, or go really slowly. Well, keep up your pace. You're doing it. Well, I think I'm going to do it up on top, too. Come on, Wally! Oh, he's going to make us five minutes to spare on the track. Five minutes to spare on the track. kids are starting to understand what this means to grandpa and how proud we all are of him. He's my hero. I really like running. So I, I don't know about stopping. It, um, I'd like to run till the day I die.